Welcome to Mikon's Hardware. In this video I'm going to tell you about yet another Chinese X99 motherboard and this time I have got Huanangzhi X99 CH8. Actually I have tested this motherboard in December 2021 but up until now I didn't have any time to record the test results and share with you. Before I proceed with the video, I would like to mention that I have not forgot about the war in Ukraine and I am doing everything I could possibly do to help my country. Unfortunately, if I sit in the news all the time, I'm just going completely crazy and I need something on the side to keep my mind calm and to be able to do some help and to be able to do what I'm able to do in the current situation. Also, I need all possible money right now. I sleep very little and I try to work as much as possible. YouTube is part of my work. That's why I will try to produce these technical videos to help you with the technical details of different hardware, but also to be able to earn some money, which I will be donating to Ukraine to be able to survive in this horrible time. I would also like to ask you to provide a link to my video if you're going to use any information which I'm going to tell in this video. I have spent two full working days to do proper testing of this motherboard and I have tested almost everything you could possibly test with this 100 X99 CH8 motherboard. And lastly, the motherboard was provided to me by Huanan.pl website. They did not pay me for this review and I have sent the motherboard back to them after testing. Still, Huanan.pl is also providing custom-made BIOS, which is not free. If you buy the motherboard from them, you will get the BIOS for free. If you want just the BIOS, you can contact them and ask how much it is going to cost you. Since the BIOS is not free, I'm not allowed to share it publicly, but I have tested the motherboard two times, first one with the default stock BIOS and second one with the modified BIOS, which was provided by Huanan.pl. In this video, I'm going to tell you all the test results, but first, Let's take a look at the technical specification of the motherboard. As you would expect, X99 CHA uses LGA2011 version 3 socket. You can install Intel Core i7 and Xeon E5 v3 v4 CPUs. On the motherboard you will find 8 memory slots with quad-channel memory configuration. Regular desktop as well as registered ECC memory are supported. The motherboard chipset is Intel C612. On the motherboard you will find 8 USB 2 ports and 4 USB 3 ports. 4 USB 2 and 2 USB 3 are available at the back I.O. panel, as well as 4 USB 2 and 2 USB 3 are available through the front panel headers. You also get 10 SATA ports, 6 of them are SATA 3.0 and 4 of them are S-SATA 3.0, basically the standard configuration for X99 or C612 chipset. We are also getting 5 4-pin fan headers on the motherboard. All PCI Express expansion slots have physical dimension of PCI Express X16, but only three of them are connected to the CPU and one is connected to the chipset. The black ones are connected to the CPU and the gray one is connected to the chipset. The first one is PCI Express X16, the second one is PCI Express X4 connected to the chipset, and the other two are PCI Express X8. The motherboard also has one M.2 slot for PCI Express and VME SSDs, which is connected as PCI Express 3.0 X4. Audio codec is Realtek ALC887, and we have dual network configuration. Both of the controllers are Realtek REL 8168 or 8111. Additionally, the motherboard has an onboard VGA adapter, which is a speed AST2300. There is also a single U.2 slot for extra storage, unfortunately I don't have anything to test it, thus I don't know if it's working and if it's working correctly. And on the I.O. panel there are two PS2 ports, which nobody needs these days, but they are still there. Detailed VRM configuration is available on your screen, but I will mention that the motherboard is using a six-phase design and not three-phase design with the doublers. Each phase consists of two MOSFETs, first one can handle 75 amperes and the other one can handle 50 amperes. Here it's important to understand that 75 and 50 amperes specification for the MOSFETs is valid only under ideal conditions. If the MOSFETs are overheating, the maximum current will be reduced. Thus we can see that the VRM on this motherboard is not the best and the VRM heatsink is rather small. Moving to the test results, I will be focusing on the problematic areas and some extra features that I have tested, because most of the things are working correctly on this motherboard. 
If you would like to see everything I have tested, just put the video on pause and take a look at my presentation. So from the issues, I have figured out that only two out of five fan headers can be adjusted. This is CPU and SysFan1 headers. The other fan headers cannot be adjusted even though all of them are 4-pin PWM fan headers. Another important thing to mention is that the Cray PCI Express X16 slot is connected to chipset, thus it is working at PCI Express 2.0 speed and not PCI Express 3.0 speed. Additionally, I have tested NVIDIA SLI using two NVIDIA GTX 960 graphics cards and I can say that it is working perfectly fine. As most of the other Chinese X79 and X99 motherboards, Huanangju X99 CH8 has issue with the temperature sensors on the motherboard. Here I would like to emphasize that the CPU temperature sensors are working correctly because they are built into the CPU. Some people are asking me how to monitor CPU temperature if the temperature sensors are not working. So the sensors on the motherboard are not working, the sensors on the CPU are working correctly. With Quanon GX99 CH8 we have got one working temperature sensor on the motherboard, but the motherboard sensor has an offset and does not specify the real temperature. Next, the default BIOS of Quanon GX99 CH8 does not have RAM timings. It is possible to overcome this issue by using modified BIOS from Koshak, which is available on GitHub to download, or you can get it from Mi899 application. For VRM testing, I have used my Xeon E5 2690 V3, but this time I did not implement Turbo Boost Unlock, because with the Turbo Boost Unlock, this pathetic small radiator was not able to properly cool down the VRM, and I did not want to burn out this motherboard since it didn't belong to me, and I had to send it back to Huanan.pl website. So, with E5 2690 V3 at stock frequency after 1 hour stress test using ADA64, the VRM temperature was higher than 75 degrees Celsius. Thus, I would say the performance is rather poor. With the stock frequency, you can use 12 core E5 2690 V3 because 75 degrees Celsius is a rather safe temperature, but if you plan to implement Turbo Boost Unlock, some extra cooling onto the VRM zone is required. Additionally, I have tested the motherboard with four GPUs connected. No matter what I have tried, no matter which GPUs I have used, and no matter which PCI Express slots I have used, the motherboard simply refuses to start if I connect four GPUs. I can connect three GPUs and one M.2 adapter, and all of them are working, but if I connect four GPUs, then the motherboard refuses to start. A few extra notes about Quanon G X99 CH8. My motherboard came to me without M.2 mounting screw. This is very annoying because if you don't have this screw, you cannot properly install M.2 SSD. Luckily for me, I have got some extra M.2 screws to be able to use it on this motherboard, but if you're not building computers every day, it's very likely that you don't have these screws lying around. Thus, I can just complain about Huanan G quality assurance when they are missing some important screws. From the good side though, Huanan G is now supplying the motherboards with a basic English manual, and I would have to say that this manual is actually useful. Since Huanan G X99 CH8 is designed for server-like workloads, I have tested lots of server features. First of all, RAM ECC mode does not work with the default BIOS. Then I have tested SATA RAID and it does work on Huanan G X99 CH8. PCI Express buffication also works. Detailed PCI Express buffication setup you can see on your screen, but basically you can set up X8 X8 as well as X4 X4 configurations if you want to. GPU path through with IO MMU groups is also working. Restore on AC power loss also works. Some specific test results using Xeon E5 2690 V3. Most of you are probably interested to know if it's possible to implement Turbo Boost Unlock, and sure enough, it is possible. In this case, I have used Ultimate Patcher tool, which is able to patch this stock X99 CH8 BIOS as well as Koshak modified BIOS to be able to adjust voltage stride from the BIOS. So the Turbo Boost Unlock is implemented in the BIOS, but the voltages are left with the default values. Then you can go into the BIOS and adjust your voltages to the level you want, thus you can figure out the best undervolting configuration for your particular CPU. This BIOS is now available through my Mi899 application. 
I have also tested i7-5820K. This CPU is particularly interesting because it supports overclocking and it has only 28 PCI Express lanes. Unfortunately though, with the default BIOS overclocking does not work, and the PCI Express configuration is not the best either. Since the CPU has only 28 PCI Express lanes, we are getting the following configuration of the PCI Express X16 slots. The first slot works as PCI Express X8, the second one which is connected to the chipset is still working as X4 2.0, and the other two are working as PCI Express X8 3.0. This is not an optimal configuration because we do not have a single PCI Express X16 slot to connect the graphics card. Still, I don't think it is a very big disadvantage because no one is going to use i7-5820K as a service CPU on this motherboard. Finally, let's take a look which of these issues can be fixed if I use a custom-made Quanon.pl BIOS for Quanon GX99 CH8. Only two of the mentioned issues were fixed with the custom-made BIOS. Overclocking is possible if I use the custom-made BIOS, and the RAM ECC mode does work with the custom-made Huanan.pl BIOS for X99CH8. Unfortunately, even if I use the custom-made BIOS, I am still not able to boot up with four GPUs connected to the motherboard. As I have mentioned before, I have tested lots of different configuration of the GPUs, but as soon as I connect four GPUs to the motherboard, it simply refuses to start. The system hands on the BIOS logo screen and doesn't go any further. The smart function is also available only for the CPU and SysFan1 fan headers, even if I'm using the custom-made BIOS. It seems like the motherboard simply does not have required hardware to be able to adjust fan speed for the rest of the fan headers. With these test results, we can make a conclusion about Quanon G X99 CH8 motherboard. The motherboard itself is not bad, but I find it a bit pointless. If the motherboard would have a slightly better VRM, then I would like it much more, but with the current pathetic VRM, I don't think it's a very attractive option, especially if you plan to use high-core count Xeon E5 V3 CPU with the Turbo Boost Unlock. For example, if the VRM would be a little bit better, I would say that it is a good fit for E5 V3 with the Turbo Boost Unlock. On the other hand, if you are looking for a pure server motherboard, then Huanan G X99 CH8 with the Xeon E5 V4 might be a good option. With V4 CPUs you don't and you can't make the Turbo Boost unlock, and these CPUs consume and require much less power than V3 counterparts. All in all, almost everything is working fine on the motherboard, and apart of the poor VRM design, I can complain about the fan headers. We have only two adjustable fan headers, the rest of the fan headers are not adjustable. Also, the default stock bias does not have memory timings adjustments, and you cannot overclock CPUs with unlocked multiplier. This is probably not very important if you have a locked CPU or if you just need a server. Still, it is nice to be able to adjust memory timings even if you are using your computer just as a background server. For this, you can use a modification of the stock BIOS from Koshak, available to download by the link provided in the video description and in Mi 899 application. Finally, my score for Huanan G X99 CH8 would be 7 out of 10. If the motherboard would cost a bit less than it is costing right now, then I would give it a 8 or even a 9 out of 10, but with the current price, I don't think it was worth anything more than 7 out of 10. If you need a server which is based on Xeon E5 V3 or E5 V4 CPU with a lot of RAM and lots of storage, Huanan G X99 CH8 might be your option. If you are looking for a desktop computer, then Huanan G X99 TF or X99 FA is a much better alternative. With this, thanks for watching, thanks for listening, I hope it was interesting and it was enjoyable. Bye bye.